<laughs> okay, Ed, I've made my apology, my confession. Over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Susan, and um, thanks for inviting me to come and run this session. Um, uh, my name's Ed Stambaluyan, and uh, I'm a passionate home cook. Yet yeah, professionally, I am a theatre director and comedy director, but I love to cook. I love to cook. And um, cooking Armenian food for me has been a way of connecting with my roots. And I've done a lot of it over lockdown. Um, as you can imagine, there's a lot more free time to be doing cooking. Um, and I've been cooking a lot from the Lavash cookbook, which we might talk about later. I did my first Bastoma and my first uh, Lavash on my hob, uh, which was a mixed success. Um, and Sweet Sajuk and all of this. But one of the things I've cooked for a long, long time is what I call, and I think I'm going to take all of the blame from you, Susan, what I call dolma um, <laughs> and what we're going to be making today. Um, and I've been working on this recipe very much on and off for the last few years. And it's my version of a dish which absolutely everyone makes and everyone has a version of. So I hope you will forgive me being the leader of this session and uh, join me in making this recipe. And I'm really, really interested to hear all about your versions of the recipe and different dolma and salma that you've uh, eaten and made over the years. And there'll be lots of time to do that during this session. Um, I am sounding a bit rushed and that's because I realise that we've got quite a lot of cooking to do. Um, so I think we're, uh, we're going to jump straight into it. Uh, please, if anyone has any questions at any point in time, just raise your hand or unmute yourself or, um, uh, or do ask. Um, if you'd like to make um, a smaller portion, you can do. I think my parents are making a smaller portion, actually. Um, uh, this will make around 35 dolma. Uh, this is actually my half portion here, um, but this will make you around 35 dolma, depending on how large you roll them. Um, but we're going to get started, and I hope everyone is chopping, frantically chopping their onions. We should have two chopped onions, and um, the first additional in ingredient, which you don't have to use, but I use, um, is a couple of cloves of garlic. Um, so you're going to finally chop the onions and the garlic and get those in some olive oil, gently frying as soon as you possibly can. Um, so we'll start, we'll start there. You're already uh, all, all chopped up your onions, I see. I have, I, I'm afraid I've cheated and I went ahead oh. and chopped them. Uh, I thought there might be some, uh, some digital things to sort. So I went ahead and got, I got ahead of the game, but um, I will wait for everyone. But as soon as you can, get those onions uh, sweating down on the hob. At, uh, while everyone is chopping their onions, why did you pick dolma specifically? Because we, I remember we had conversation, just general cooking session, and you picked dolma. Do you love dolma? Is it your favorite dish? That's a very good question. Why, uh, why would I be foolish enough to run a workshop on dolma for a group of Armenians? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, I've always loved dolma. Um, it's been, um, uh, it's, uh, I, I've always really enjoyed eating them and, um, I, I have early memories of trying to make dolma with my father actually. And we went out and, um, found some leaves in a local vineyard and cut them off this local vineyard and brought them home and boiled them and made them. Um, and I know some people today are using fresh leaves. I must admit, I'm using jarred leaves. Susan, uh, Susan is, has fresh. Susan, sh please show us what you're using. Oh, so my fresh, my fresh ones come from my sister-in-law, sister Seta. And the other day, we were at her house, and she said, "I do use my grape leaves." I'm going, "Wow, well, nobody uses grape in September. Come on." 
And I went out, and of course, she knew what she was talking about. <laughs> Her grape leaves were green, small, tender, just like they would have been in, you know, May. So that's what we're using. It's great. Where did everyone else get their uh, leaves from? Is anyone else using uh, fresh leaves? Uh, Stephen is showing his. Stephen, I bet you packed it so neatly. Uh, no. This is... <laughs> Okay. Where is Steve, Stephen? I can't see him on the... Stephen, he'll be spotlighted in a second. Okay. Stephen, what leaves, did you, what leaves did you find? Where did you find them? I just bought a pack of them. <laughs> so, sous chef. There we go. Do you know where they're from? Um, I think it's uh, Egypt. Yeah, Egypt. I bought a jar and they took her forever to try and get out of the jar. It's very difficult, yes. Yeah, can be. And they don't look great. Okay. Uh, they've tried, we've, you know. Yes. We've just see how, we see how we get on with those. You, you might have to do a certain amount of stitching together with some yes. of those leaves. Yes, yes. And I know people might still be chopping onions, and that's totally fine. Um, but when you put your onions uh, into the pan, um, you're going to put a teaspoon of sugar with those onions. Um, so as the onions cook down, um, we're going to get that first little bit of sweetness with um, which comes from the onions. For me, the thing that I love most about dolma, and I think is what I enjoyed about dolma when I was a child, is the mixture of the sweetness with the... Uh, sweet and the sour or the sweet and the salty so um, here we have the sweetness of a little bit of sugar in those onions which just allows them to bring out the natural sweetness and the sweetness of tomato paste I use quite a bit of tomato paste in my recipe um, uh, and balancing that with the um, the sour lemon um, and we're going to put quite a lot of the lemon juice in them uh, some while we cook the rice, some when we put them in the pot and cook them, and then when you serve them, another squeeze of lemon juice and olive oil on top as well. Um, and actually in the past I've made them with um, lemon salt. Um, today I'm going to make them with fresh lemons, but in the past I've used lemon salt, which really gives it a real kind of tart kick, which is... Um, is really nice against that sweetness as well. Oh, and the currants as well. Another bit of sweetness in there. So Have you used it with one, um, preserved lemons? I've never made it with preserved lemons. That's an interesting idea. Um, got quite um, Just salty. Quite salty, yes. Uh, so yes, one teaspoon of, um, of sugar in with those onions. Uh, it's the onions and the garlic that should be frying off in your pan. Let's look at that now. Uh, I know we have quite a few people watching us on Facebook as well. If you have questions or comments, comment on Facebook. We'll pass on the questions to Ed as well. Now, if anyone is uh, frying their onions and uh, they've got a spare hand and they want something to do, um, the next thing you could do is to give your rice a wash. And again, it's another controversial thing. Some people do it, some people don't do it. Um, but you're going to take your rice. Now, uh, yes, we've got a question, I think, from Elizabeth. Yeah, I, 
My, uh, my mother-in-law always used pudding rice for dolma, so I've oh, got really? pudding rice. Fantastic. Um, which I guess is slightly more absorbent, so it might be that uh, you would need to adjust slightly your um, quantities of water, and, but we'll see, okay. we'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, I use basmati rice um, because I like uh, that it has a little bit more bite than long grain rice. Um, but I wash the rice before I use it. Um, and to do that, I just put the rice in a bowl and pour some water over it and give it a, a rinse and then uh, strain it through a sieve. And I do that a couple of times just to take out some of the starch from the rice. So if you have a spare hand or you have a sous chef, you could, uh, you could also do that now. And, and I should just comment, um, uh, perhaps confusingly, I've used cup measurements in my recipe. Um, it's a bit of a mix of cups and milliliters and teaspoons and grams. Um, so when I say a cup of rice, um, I mean an American measurement uh, cup of rice. Now, if you don't have a cup measurement, um, a cup of rice is, is roughly um, about 190 grams of rice. Um, and uh, so if you'd like to measure it out and be super accurate, then it's about 190 grams of rice that you're looking for. Uh, but if you have a cup, it's about that size, about that much rice. Um, and you just give it a, uh, a good rinse. And so the onion, the onion should just be sweating off. They shouldn't, um, you don't want to get uh, colour on them, but they should just be um, softening nicely um, on a sort of medium high heat. As you can see. Uh, Edward. There we go. Did we have Edward. A Yes. Hello. Are you is ignoring that... your mother? Is that my mother? It's my yes. mother. Are you ignoring me? <laughs> no, I'm not. I have a very important question. Yeah. Uh, when you uh, rinse the rice, do you use hot water or cold water? I use cold water. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I put it in a bowl with some cold water and I mess it around with my hand um, to, uh, until the water goes cloudy. And then I'll pour that into a sieve. And then I'll do it again and pour it into a sieve again and then leave it okay. to drain. You want to make sure all of that water is out of the rice before you put it in. Um, okay. We're going to put it in later. But, too much um, information. Thank you. Okay. Too much information. She says, my mother says to shut up to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have a parent to moderate the discussion. It's like, you have spoken enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, How is everyone doing? I don't... I don't um, I want to make sure I'm not rushing anyone, but um, have we all got onions in the pan? I, I see lots of nodding heads. Um, we have a comment on Facebook who someone says I could eat whole pot of it, so <laughs> people are getting hungry. Well, we're, a little, we're quite a way off eating yet, so... <laughs> I know in Armenia, different type of rice was used for tolma. Mm. I have no idea what was the difference. So if there's anyone from Armenia or has done watching, please comment and remind me what was the difference. But there was special tolma, tolma rice, which might be more similar to the pudding rice, like Elizabeth was saying. That yes. Yes. Ones. yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure whether because um, I don't know what Hilda was from Egypt and I don't know what they used there, but maybe when the, in those days it wasn't so easy to find um, to find basmati rice or long grain rice. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe she just liked it like that. Yeah. There are all the varieties. Yeah. And um, 
I think we're, uh, if everyone's got their onions on the go and they're starting to soften up, um, give, me a, give me a bit of a nod if, you, if you've got sort of soft looking onions. Great, good, good, good. Um, so uh, next we'll add the pine nuts uh, so that they can fry off a little bit with the onions. Um, so uh, we're gonna add um, just 25 grams of pine nuts. I know pine nuts are um, almost as expensive as gold currently. So um, feel free to um, uh, use a little bit less if you'd like. I thought it was 50 that you asked for. Oh, I've measured 50. Oh, um, that might have been me getting confused between... Um, no, that was the uh, currents. No, my fault. 50 of no, currents no, no, no. And 25 I, of pine nuts. I'm not good at reading recipes. Fine, I shall just use half. I'll just eat the rest. So again, pop those in and it should be on a medium high heat and you just let those um, fry and they should swell up a little bit with the, uh, with the oil and, um, and the onions. And we'll give those about uh, four or five minutes. Um, now, uh, if you have a sous chef or you have a spare set of hands, um, while those um, onions and pine nuts are frying off, um, what you might like to do is uh, to, to prepare your spice mix. Um, now, I like to put it all in a little um, Tupperware container um, because uh, it all goes in at the same time. And in that little Tupperware container, you're going to put... Um, uh, this isn't going in the in the pot yet. This is just in a little Tupperware on the side just to get you ahead of the game. Um, this is 50 grams of currants. This is one, uh, sorry, half a teaspoon of salt. This is one teaspoon of allspice. And it's half a teaspoon or a bit more if you'd like of dried mint. Now, again, I use dried mint. I also use fresh mint later. So if you're using lots of fresh mint, you don't have to put the dried mint in or uh, if you want to use dried mint instead of fresh mint. So I was busy trying to find my dried mint. How much dried mint was it, Ed? Um, so I use a large half teaspoon of dried mint. Oh, right. So that's in your spice mix again. It's yep. 50 grams of currants your um, half a teaspoon of salt, um, your one teaspoon of allspice, yep. and your half teaspoon of dried mint. Maybe, uh, maybe if someone could just put that in the chat, that would be useful. Do you want me to pop that in the chat? 50 grams. I'll put that in the chat now. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, um. Salt, teaspoon of allspice, dried mint. And uh, also in your spice mix, you want to put, um, uh, I'd say, 25 grinds of black pepper. Um, but it's <laughs> just some good grinds of black pepper in that spice mix as well. And just leave that to one side when you're ready. I see that Hasmik shared a really beautiful picture of her table all organized with all the ingredients. Um, 
Can I share it with everyone, Hasmik, with your permission? What's that, sorry? Hasmik organized. Oh, Hasmik, can you mute yourself, please, before? Okay. These are the grapes we've been growing. Ah. We've got a trellis with the grapevine, and we've got lots of leaves, which are close. I mean, I'm very proud of these. So you are using fresh, fresh leaves as well? I no, no, I've frozen all our fresh ones because the ones now are a bit tough, so I've used okay. them from a jar today. Right. But they seem okay, they're fine. Yeah. Okay, so um, again, give me a nod if you're looking at your pine nuts and they look to be swelling up and absorbing lots of that nice oil. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. So you should have lovely soft onions and some, uh, some pine nuts that are just slightly swelling. Yeah. That's great. Lots of thumbs up. <laughs> okay, uh, so next we're going to put the rice in. Now, this is a very important stage and where okay. I have many times messed it up. So uh, it's very, very important that you stay by your pan uh, or close to your pan for this next bit. You're going to take your rice, which you've, which you've now washed and drained, so it should be dry. And uh, you're going to put that in with the, um, you're going to put that in with the onions and pine nuts. And you're going to turn the heat up a little bit. Uh, and you're going to mix it all together. And you're going to fry the rice. And we're going to fry that for another sort of five, five or so minutes. Um, but you're going to do it at quite a high heat. And the idea is to try and get that rice to absorb the, um, uh, that lovely oil and the flavour of the onions. Um, so we're going to just fry that rice. And that's where you can... Uh, you can burn your rice if you're if you're not careful. A little bit like making a risotto at this point. Just need to make sure you keep keep it moving um, uh, so that it doesn't catch. But you should be able to hear it sort of. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you can hear mine, but you should be able to hear it uh, sizzling away. It needs to be hot enough to make sure that rice does absorb the flavour. Again, if you've got a second hand during this, uh, you might want to, just off on the side, start squeezing a lemon or two. Because uh, in about five, ten minutes, we're going to be using the lemon juice and we'll be using, um, we'll be using around five tablespoons of that lemon juice in a bit. Um, so that's probably uh, a lemon and a half, if not two lemons. So uh, if you've got a sous chef, get them squeezing lemons, just so you're ready for that. Edward? Yeah? Um, you, the recipe has cinnamon. On, on, how much? How much? Does it? Yeah. Yes, cinnamon. It, that's not on your chat. So how much cinnamon we should put in? Oh, okay. I didn't realise I'd included the cinnamon. Um, a very small amount because uh, okay. we're doing half half a portion. I'd say almost a quarter of a teaspoon, or um, you could probably hazard a half of a teaspoon, but a small half of a teaspoon. I thought I'd left it off. Hang on. Hang on. I put. I thought it was a whole teaspoon of cinnamon. Uh. No, that's a whole, te whole teaspoon of allspice. Allspice? Oh, oh, right, right, right. Yes. Yeah, okay. That's in our, oh. that's in our, um, our mix. No, no, no. Fine. I did allspice. I'm getting confused. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. Do I put the cinnamon in, the, in with the spice mix? 
yes, you could just put a, 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 little, a little bit of cinnamon in with that spice mix, which is the currants, the allspice, the salt, uh, and the dried mint. And is this all your own, um, your own mix? Or you've read it somewhere or you've developed it? This mix of spices? Yeah. Uh, this is something I've developed uh, over lots of experimenting. Um, uh, and um, lots of cooking for family and being told it's not quite right and I should go back and try again. Um, so this is the recipe we've got to. And as I said, it's really interesting hearing what other people put in, um, how they spice their rice. I've heard people talk about uh, using cumin, um, people who put paprika. Um, uh, so uh, I think it really is up to you how you want to spice your rice. But this is um, this is really Paprika would be, would have been a must in my mum's cooking, black pepper and paprika, yes. making it, I mean, no one would ever use currants, it just would be unheard of, but it's, I can imagine being it a nice addition. Mm. Well, one thing you might think of is this Baharat spice, which they sell these days, yeah. which is a mixture of black pepper, cumin, smoked paprika, Roasted coriander, cinnamon, nutmeg, mint, cardamom, and cloves, and it. Uh, oh, it's, it's got everything in it. Yes, it's got everything in, and it's a spice which. Uh, what's it lot, saying? Uh, Otto Lange. Otto uses Lange it. uses it a lot. Mm. Oh. Can somebody write that in the chat? How it's spelt? I'll yeah. write it. I'll write it now. Thank you. Baharat. Baharat. Oh. I'm now... Please, I've got yeah. some. I can bring you. Pardon? Well, I've got some. I can bring it to you. Oh, aren't you good, Hasmik? Well done. Yes, I made... Oh, my as well. Ah, oh, right, yeah. I can probably find it at uh, Spice Mound and at London Bridge at Borough Market. <laughs> Uh, could the spice mix be in with the rice and the onion, or is that to the side now? No. To the side, yes. Uh, not yet. I'll let you know when that's going to go in. That should just be to the side. That rice should really be um, should really be crackling away. You should hear it really um, hissing and popping, um, and that you just got to be super careful that it doesn't burn. But that that's this is where all the flavour comes from. I think um, is in this in this frying. So. Um, and this is obviously also partly cooking the rice as well, which is helpful for when we then roll it in a bit. So um, next up, uh, as you should be able to hear that nice crackling away and that rice is uh, becoming translucent and absorbing that flavor. Uh, next up, we're gonna add the tomato paste. Um, and again, not everyone uses tomato paste in their dolma. I told a, a, a friend, a Lebanese friend recently that I used tomato paste and she looked shocked and appalled. Um, so uh, this I really like because it has the sweetness that you get with the currants and that little bit of sugar. Um, uh, so I use quite a lot of tomato paste. So we're going to now put two tablespoons of, um, uh, of tomato paste into the rice. And then you're going to mix that in and it's really important that that also fries off. So we're going to give that a, just a couple of minutes to fry off in the rice as well. How many, how many spoons? Sorry, I missed that. That's two tablespoons of tomato. Two tablespoons, right. right. Tablespoons. So you should have a nice, strong rice, red rice colour. color we have lots of people following on facebook as well share us uh, share uh, your pictures with us as well if you're watching and cooking on facebook um. it's 
TikTok, how are people watching it on Facebook? On just the Armenian Institute page? Yes, it's live on Armenian Institute page, yes. Okay. We have quite a few people who joined there. Um, And again, it's a good idea. While, while that's frying away, if your sous chef needs a job, um, you could get them chopping herbs for you. Now, again, I use a big mixture of herbs. I sort of use whatever's available in the shops. Um, uh, and I, I really vary it each time. But uh, today I'm going to use a handful of um, dill. I really, really like dill. And a big handful of parsley, obviously and maybe a bit of fresh mint as well. Um, but it really is up to you which herbs uh, go in there. I've, I've heard of people using basil as well. Yeah, I use basil, especially the red, the purplish, the purple one. Yeah. I mean, in terms of herbs, you just want a good couple of handfuls. So something like that. There we go. Whoops. Yeah. And you're just going to rough, roughly chop those ready to go in. They'll be going in in a, in a few minutes. Comment from Lola Kundakjan, who also ran an event with us recently. She's a poet, and she says she's loving this. Lola, if you can hear us, post us pictures of your dolma. I bet they are very poetic looking. Ah, thank you very much. That's very kind. Could I say, um, if anybody doesn't know this little tool, it's really great for chopping parsley and coriander and everything else. The you Oh, Susan, let let me find and spotlight you. Can you share it again? Oh, here it is. And the action is just like that, and it goes really, really fast. Things like parsley, coriander, well, any, any, any thing. Susan, but where did you find that? That looks dangerous. Uh, well, where, where did you find it? Levon brought it back from a concert tour. Uh, <laughs> because I've looked for a half moon. I've seen in Italy the uh, uh, cooks using a. Uh, 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 um, yeah. Oh, yeah, the bigger one. Yeah. Half moon. And I can't bring that back in my luggage because I. Yeah, not. Because unless I went. To, uh, put, it in the hold. So yeah. I'm good. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but at this stage, we're going to your, your uh, rice should have absorbed all of that tomato paste. You should have a nice sort of um, red, orangey rice, um, and you're just uh, still being careful not to let it catch because it's still on quite a high heat. I've just turned mine down a bit, and at this point, we're going to add our spice mix. So just a reminder again that that's our currants, allspice, salt dried mint, cinnamon, and black pepper. One more time, that's our currants, salt, allspice, dried mint, cinnamon, and black pepper. And you're just going to add all of that in and give it a good stir. And when that hits the pan, we should have the most amazing, fragrant, lovely smell coming from the pan. Hopefully not the smell of burnt rice. I might turn my hob down a bit more. <laughs> Once you've added that spice mix, you're then going to add your fresh herbs. And again, uh, it's just a sort of two or three handfuls of, uh, of chopped herbs, whichever herbs you want. I've used parsley, dill, and a little bit of fresh mint. Um, whoops. I'm a sort of firm believer that you can never have enough herbs. Um, so as you can see, uh, and those will wilt a little bit in the heat. 
And then once you put the fresh herbs and the spice mix in, you're now going to add um, your lemon juice. Now, this is where I've slightly changed the recipe because previously I did a little bit of water at this point to allow um, the rice to kind of half cook before we let it cool and then we put them in the, the leaves. Um, but because I've, um, I'm no longer using the lemon salt, um, I'm using lemon juice instead. That has its own uh, liquids in it. Uh, so we're just gonna use lemon juice. So we're actually gonna add, add to this rice mix, we're gonna add five tablespoons of lemon juice. You're going to give that a good mix in. And then we're going to set the heat at a relatively low heat. And you're going to put a lid on it. And you're going to leave it um, for about 10 minutes. Um, now, in the past, I've left it on too high a heat and I've come back and the rice has burnt at the bottom. So um, we're just going to check back every couple of minutes just to make sure it's not um, blackening or getting too crispy. But the idea is to let that lemon juice cook into the rice. So the rice is partly cooked when we roll it uh, in, the, in the dolma in a bit. Um, so just every now and again, you can go back and give it a little stir. But if you keep the lid on, it will keep that liquid in and it will go into the rice. How is everyone doing? Has anyone got any questions? Are we all, I'm seeing some nods. I'm still on chopping herbs, I'm afraid. That's absolutely fine. Not a problem. Is Stephen, how's it going? You're squeezing, squeezing lemons, Stephen. Yes. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ed, uh, when, you were, uh, when you joined us last time making mante, you took some amazing pictures of your mante. That's what we started talking to you. I had such a good time. It was, I really, really, really loved that session. And the mante were absolutely delicious. Oh. Um, I'd never made them like that before. And it was so, it was so nice. Um, they look great. I, was on my own, I live on my own and it was during lockdown. And so it was so nice to sit with all of you um, and share food and share recipes and uh, it felt very special. Yes, yeah. Are you taking pictures today? I will take some pictures at some point, yes. Yeah, that's great. That's, that looks very yummy, your mix of uh, rice and herbs over there. So just every couple of minutes, if you just give it a quick stir to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom, but then put that lid back on so we can uh, make sure it's um, absorbing that, that moisture. Just take this moment to check in with people. Uh, how's it going over at the Stambaluyan household? Is it? We can't hear you. you might have to. Uh, we might have to unmute you. Uh, no, no pan shots to date. <laughs> <laughs> it's going very well. Okay. Good. We think. We think. A slight burning of the rice at the beginning, but I think I've rescued it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> That is the I cardinal kind of, sin, burning the rice. I kind of burnt my rice too, but I think it's going to be okay. So again, just give it a little mix and it should be softening up nicely. And we'll give it, um, we'll, we'll give it another sort of uh, five or so minutes. Um, and then we will start preparing our leaves. Um, huh wait for the rice to cool a little bit before we do the rolling otherwise we will um severely burn our fingers should the spice mix be in the in the pan now or is that built to the side it, it yeah. should so just a reminder 
everything should be in the pan now. Um, so we add the spice mix. Uh, so after you've added the tomato paste, you should add the spice mix. You should add your herbs and, um, and you mix that all together. And then you add your lemon juice, which is five tablespoons of lemon juice, which is roughly about a lemon and a half or two lemons. John, um, what about this, the currants? What's that, sorry? The currants. The currants are part of the spice mix, yes. Oh. So they should all, they should all be in there. So oh, just the currants, just currants, <laughs> all spice, salt, dried mint, cinnamon, black pepper, tomato paste should all, should all now be in there. And your fresh herbs, whatever fresh herbs you've chosen should be in there. Maybe people could um, show us on their cameras what they're, uh, if they can. I don't, not everyone can. Yeah. Would anyone like to show their mix? Uh... Apparently what mine is looking like. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Let's spotlight you. Oops. Let me spotlight you. Oh, looks delicious. Hang on, Elizabeth, let me. Elizabeth is holding up hers. Let's see. <gasps> Very nice. Looks delicious. Stephen is holding up. Yes, very good. Is very this, nice. is this ready now? Do you have tomato paste in there, Stephen? I do. Yeah, it's smelling yeah. really good. Oh, <laughs> you're, hang on. Uh, let me see. Hey, this very is good. great. Very good. Uh, Get that lid back on it. Get that lid back. It's mine. Oh, hang on. This is. Uh, sorry, I'm just. Very good. Fantastic. That looks delicious. Yeah. Someone was saying he's mine as well. Yeah. Oh, here's his uh, currants. Hang on, let me spot them. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that rice, I have to say. Yeah, Garen, you're going to have Dolma for weeks and weeks and weeks. And we pop, I'll pop in. Yeah. It's um, just way. We're just going to eat all of it. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. <laughs> That's great. Wow, that's very yummy, everyone. Oh, so Ed, should the rice be cooked? What's that, sorry? Ed, should the rice be properly cooked now? Um, the rice? It should be uh, uh, half cooked. It shouldn't, it, okay. it, should, it shouldn't be edible at the moment. It should still be sort of rice, but we're half cooking it. So we, uh, at this stage, you don't want it to okay. be soft. Uh, but you do want it to have absorbed all of that lemon juice. So it should be half cooked. Yeah. While we are all cooking, can I start a conversation? This is also for Facebook crowd as well to contribute in the comments. About the, all the names and variants of Tolma and Dolma and Sarma. And what do you call it? Uh, we had a lot of discussions about this at the Armenian Institute. Uh, Miss Susan even prepared a bit because I, being a house auntie, would call it a dolma, and Ed called it a dolma, and Susan calls it a sarma. And there are so many varieties of it. So please, here on our Facebook as well, what do you call it? And which types you know? <laughs> For example, the word sarma is completely not used in Armenia. We would call it tepov or terevov tolma for the one you're making. Yeah. And summer tolma, which is amarain tolma, which is cabbage and uh, stuffed in vegetables. You also have the Lenten one, pasuts tolma, which is um, cabbage leaves with chickpeas and beans. Mm. Uh, um, yeah. I'm sure she's in a few more. As I mentioned at the beginning, I had no idea people called grape leaves, things with grape leaves, dolma. We, we only used sarma and um, yalanchi <laughs> or yalanchi sarma. So fake sarma for the vegetarian one, the one we're doing today, and um, sarma for the one. And I, I, of course, as a kid, didn't realize that sarma is from the Turkish to wrap. And dolma is for the Turkish to stuff. So there are the dolmuş taxis where you stuff a lot of people into them. And um, 
we, yeah, we had sarma about once a week. It was really a very popular dish in our house. And we ate it with lemon or, or yogurt on it. Um, mm. And we used the word goma for things like eggplants, uh, sorry, aubergines, courgettes, and uh, tomatoes, sometimes yeah. onions that were stuffed with the same mixture, basically. But um, just, just A lot of work for the women who were making it. Everybody enjoyed it, Elizabeth, including the women making it. Because, you know, in, back in the day, you would hardly ever be cooking by yourself. There were usually a lot of people in the, in the kitchen. And um, what was nice growing up is that we were encouraged to cook from very young and help out. Yeah. Just to say, I think probably um, your rice will have absorbed that lemon juice now. Um, uh, there shouldn't be any more moisture in the pan. If you leave the lid on and take it off the heat, um, that's just going to cool down. Uh, it will probably need about 10 minutes or so to cool down before you can work with it. Otherwise you will uh, burn your fingers when you get to rolling. So if you take that off the heat now um, and leave it covered and it will continue to absorb some of the moisture. Um, the next thing that we'll do is um, when everyone is at that stage is prepare your vine leaves. Now, um, some people I think have already uh, prepared their vine leaves. Um, some people like Susan um, uh, are using fresh vine leaves. Um, but if you're using them from a jar, you might already have struggled with pulling them out of the jar. But if you haven't, now would be the time to, to, to start that struggle. So you're going to take the vine leaves out of the jar and unroll them. And I find that it's good to uh, wash them off a little bit because they're in uh, sort of pickling water. Um, so I rinse the leaves once or twice. And again, what I will do is I'll put them in a big bowl, uh, pour cold water over them, um, just pat them up and down so the water gets into the leaves and drain that water off and then do it a second time and then drain that water off. Um, and what you want to try and do is unroll the leaves so they're all flat in one pile. Um, ready for rolling. Um, we, uh, we're probably going to, if, you, if you're following along with the quantities that I've been cooking, you'll need about um, uh, somewhere between 30 and 40 leaves, because uh, we'll probably be making about 30 or 40 dolma, again, depending on how big uh, you end up rolling them. Um, and so, uh, what's, is everyone at? At this stage, give me a thumbs up if we're all, yeah, fantastic, <laughs> great, good, good, good. Um, uh, uh, do you already have your leaves set up and ready to go? Or no, oh, this is what we're working on now, great. So um, what I like to do, I'm just gonna move my second camera just so you can see what I'm doing here. While you're doing this, we're getting some responses to my question. Um, Ed, uh, right. Sema, who is cooking with us today, she says we call it sarma because it is rolling grapes. Here is she. Do you want to, do you want to say it, what you've written yourself? Hi, Tatui. And hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, hello, I am I am from Turkey, and my mom makes it um, make it. Uh, we call this tarma, and um, dolma. Uh, it, my mom makes dolma with eggplant and some potato, uh, and with some pepper, and but with uh, same ingredients. Do you use cabbage as well? Cabbage leaves to wrap it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. cabbage is like rolling it up. Cabbage is rolling as well. It's very popular in Russia, called galante. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you say you use um, stuff them with buckwheat? Sorry. Did you say that you stuffed them with buckwheat? Buckwheat. Buckwheat. No. No. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> no. Sorry, I misheard. Um, someone also mentions on Facebook, Kathy Hollowell says in America it's Sarma. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we have yeah. Americans nodding on, <laughs> on Zoom. Mm. Uh, yeah. 
I wasn't um, surprised. Sorry, go ahead. Just, uh, I'd love us to continue this conversation. Just to say that um, before I roll, I like to um, lie out the dolma that I'm going to use in one pile, all in all in the right um, orientation, uh, because I'm a little bit OCD, but also it makes your job a lot easier. So, um, uh, because when you get a, va uh, a jar of vine leaves, you'll find that actually um, some of them are not going to be good. Um, Elizabeth was showing me one earlier that had broken down the middle. So when you're unpacking the jar, you want to, oh, this is a dirty chopping board that you're now looking at, but that's fine. Um, you want to divide them up into the leaves that are good and the leaves that are not so good. Uh, and we'll hold on to the leaves that are not so good because we're going to use them in a bit to line our cooking pot. Uh, to make sure they don't burn to the sides of the cooking pot as we're cooking. Um, but you're going to need about 35 to 40 good leaves. And uh, the thing to do uh, with each leaf, um, and I'd be really interested to see what different people's leaves are like, but the thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you cut off the stem at the bottom I normally just nip it off with my, why am I doing this? Here we go. I knew, normally just nip it off with my fingers like that um, so that you don't have that hard stem as part of the dolma. Um, and then the leaf is just like that. And then I spread it out, put it on the pile and you want to put them um, uh, veiny side up. So put the, uh, put the, the where you see the, the raised veins, you want to put that up towards you because in a minute when we start rolling them, um, the veins are going to be inside the vine leaf. That's where you're going to put your filling. So when you're making your pile, uh, just put them veiny side up. Does that make sense? Have I been clear enough there? Yeah. Yeah. So please do ask questions if you have any. But, um, but just uh, make a pile of your good leaves um, and then keep your scraps and oversized leaves. If they're absolutely ginormous, then um, uh, they're not so tasty either. Um, someone was talking, was it you, Elizabeth, who was talking about um, picking leaves and when to pick them? And uh, I think we were having a chat. Susan, Susan, you were talking about that as well. Do you want to say something about that? So um, the way I was raised, anyways, you, you pick them in the spring when the leaves just are coming out. Um, obviously, you wait until they're big enough to hold the, the filling. But probably, uh, just my, I have a very big hand, but hand size would be as big as you'd want to go. They're usually a little bit smaller. And uh, you want to find ones that don't have big, um, like, gaps between the, like a maple leaf or something. You want them to... Be, have um, more of a rounded top if you can. But one thing I learned uh, growing up was that you can um, actually, you know, why not? People use raw grape leaves to eat their uh, tabbouleh and other things. Just taste. You really should, if you are with a new vine, taste one of the leaves because not all grape leaves are created equal or not all grape vines. And some of them aren't as tasty as other ones. If it's a new grapevine, taste it, taste a leaf. And if it tastes good, then just, you know that you're, you're safe. If you keel over, you know you're not safe. <laughs> <laughs> and you, not then, uh, you then boil them in water for a little while before? Uh, Very short time. They, um, you bring water to a, put a, put at home, put a pot of water on to boil. And, um, as if you're going to do pasta or something mm -hmm. and uh, have it be fairly deep. But then you can put like, I don't know, five or 10 together, drop them into the boiling water, turn them over with a ladle, you know, a spoon. What do you call those things with the holes in them? The spoons with the holes in them. Turn it over so that you do both, both sides of your little pile and then put it aside to, to drain. What, what you'll see is that the color changes. So it goes from being a bright green to a, like an olive green or an army green type of thing. Um, and then you know they're done. You just put them aside to, to cool off, basically. I, it's I'm very, I, I just finished, Elizabeth, sorry. It's really quick though, don't, 
uh, don't leave them in long. Like we're talking seconds, not minutes. Um, otherwise, you're going to cook them, which isn't yeah. good. Yeah. I, I asked for a, a, a vine as a present um, when I was leaving one job and going to another. And blow me, they gave me a red grape and not white can i use red grape red vi the leaves from a red grape i never heard of anybody making a difference between those two i, I as i said i would taste the leaf yeah Don't okay. about the grape, yep. taste the leaf in the spring mm. but like i said i i picked these leaves at, at uh, seta's house today uh, no this past week i've never picked leaves in september how she managed to have some leaves ready for me i don't know <laughs> It's normally a spring, like, you know, April, May, June, depends on where you live. Yeah. But by July, usually they're done. So I recently made um, a dish from, uh, from a chef called Olia Hercules, who some of you might know about. She has an amazing uh, recipe book called Caucasus, and she has a new recipe book just out now called Summer Kitchen. And um, uh, her recipes are from... Uh, well, Caucasus is Georgia, Azerbaijan and beyond is the subtitle to her book. There's some really beautiful recipes in there, but she has a recipe in her new book, which are, um, she doesn't call them this, she, I think she calls them just rolls, but they are beetroot leaf dolma. Um, so I grew yeah. some beetroots on my balcony, uh, which were very uh, bad beetroots, but they had <laughs> large leaves. Um, and then I cut those leaves off and you rolled a mixture of uh, bulgur wheat, and again, with a little bit of onion and some carrot, um, and then you cook them in a sort of tomato and creme fraiche sauce. They're mm. absolutely delicious. I'd really recommend the recipe. So I, I just wonder, um, obviously, dolma can mean lots of different things. Ha uh, do other people here prepare them um, with other types of leaves or um, and we get into kind of stuffed vegetable territory? Um, who has a another dolma recipe and and also other kinds of fillings perhaps people have suggestions for could i just say that when i um i think hasmig is talking when she's on mute yes uh, by the way i've seen that lady you're talking about the chef ukrainian yeah. on saturday kitchen yes and she said they have a summer kitchen in their garden just to for pre preserving all their produce and bottling them and everything. And um, yeah, I did like it. Yeah, we um, Iranian Armenian friends sometimes use, uh, and they use bulgur and, and um, all kinds of Iranian dried fruit. Mm -hmm. and, and theirs is a bit different than this, sweeter, just as nice. What is this a kind of dried fruit? I think they have dried cherries. Yes. They're dried kind plums. Of they also use dried plums. Oh, okay. Sour, sour plums. Sour plums, yeah. Yeah. Liz, do you remember we, we had some in Armenia and it was quite different, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. I, I don't remember it, but I, yeah. I'm sure it was different. Yeah. Hasmik's neighbor had cooked it. In the summer in Armenia, you would use a variety of vegetables to stuff. Yeah. But it will be, half of it will be cabbage ones, which was probably strong Russian influence. With, we would yeah. have that. And then stuff smaller aubergines and peppers and um, tomatoes. Zucchini now as well. Yes. Yeah. I've, they... I've heard of uh, stuff... Um, Zucchini flowers as well. Yeah, they're quite tender. Yes. Uh, there is there is a version which is called Yerevan dolma, which is oh, allegedly okay. I come from Yerevan. I've never heard of it, but um, it's it use it it's uses Yerevan. only Yerevan dolma. It only uses um, lamb for mm. meat filling, but apparently when you cook it, you put the bones you make the stock with under dolma and you just boil it and it's cooked in a stock at the same time yeah, um, yeah. is this the one which is like a beef burger quite quite thick it's not 
like this dolma we know. No, it is like dolma. It's grape, grape okay. leaves. You, you, dolma right. or dolma. Does, do they serve it with yogurt, Tato? Yes, yogurt, matzo oh. with garlic. Yeah. Absolutely, it's a must. Yeah. Pigeon, yeah. The Russian one would come with sour cream, maybe with dill. Um, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, I see. <laughs> it, it's it was, a yeah, sour cream. More like the Ukrainian one, it came with sour cream. The sauce had sour cream in it, and there was a lot yeah, of Yeah, I, I do love Slavic cuisine for heavy yeah. use of dill. I do like dill. I grow a lot in my garden. Uh, Has, Hasmik mentioned the, uh, what, did it taste like a burger? And that reminded me, last year I was in uh, Jerusalem, and... I saw that wasn't much on the menu that I wanted. So then it said, uh, grape leaf, rolled grape leaf. And said, so, okay, this, I'll try this. And it was like a hamburger that was yeah. wrapped in grape leaves. I'd never seen anything <laughs> like it before. And it was, it was awful, actually. <laughs> I mean, I didn't like it. But it was, it was just this really compact meat and the grape leaves. Dense, yeah. I'd never um, seen that before. Just, just so we uh, can carry on with the cooking, I'd love yeah. us to carry on with this conversation. Um, just uh, while we're waiting for that rice to cool a little bit more so we don't burn our fingers, um, we're going to prepare a pan to cook the dolma in. Um, I use this pan, which I think was about 22 centimetres. You can use a slightly smaller one. Um, it just depends how many layers of dolma we're going to um, put in the pan. Um, now, uh, what I like to do is, uh, and I think I did put in the recipe, but I'm not sure how many people uh, saw it. I asked you to bring a tomato, um, a big tomato, if you've got one. Oh. Um, and uh, I, I think I put it in the recipe. Did anyone, has anyone got a tomato? No, everyone's shaking their head. Great. No, I, um, I can I, find I, it. I do have some small tomatoes, so that's fine. So I'll tell you the reason I do it is I take a tomato and I slice it um, yeah. into chunks and then I just lay it on the bottom of the pan yeah. um, before I put the first uh, layer of vine leaves on it. And it just makes sure that um, uh, those bottom vine leaves don't get yeah. too hot and aren't, aren't getting direct heat from the bottom of the pan. I have used a lemon uh, in the past as well. Um, so uh, although you do get a more lemony flavor on your, on your vine leaves if you do that. But if you, if you can find a tomato, or something similar. Um, I found some small ones. Great. Yeah. So as long as there's something on the bottom of your pan, um, yeah. it's going to protect it from that direct heat. So uh, I'm going to use this lemon and we'll just see how that is. It might be too lemony, but it doesn't need to be particularly thick. It's just a sort of protective layer. Are you putting lemons? I am because I forgot, I uh, threw my tomato away yesterday. Oh, I see. Instead of tomato, you're putting lemons. I am, yes. Okay, um, okay, that's fine. Can we do a bit of both? Yes. Edward. Yeah. Edward. Hello. Yeah. This is your mother. Um, Hello. Could we not, because we have only small tomatoes and yeah. red pepper. Um, I thought about using a red pepper, actually. Yeah, but, but why can you not just... Um, put quite a lot of leaves at the bottom to that's make the a bed of leaves and yeah. if they burn it doesn't matter that's absolutely the other thing that you could do is Thanks. put lots of leaves at the bottom yeah there'll be a small commission <laughs> <laughs> um so you're going to put those leaves at the bottom um, uh, sorry, you're going to put whatever you're putting at the bottom of your pan to line it, whether it's a few layers of leaves or some sliced tomatoes or something. And then you're going to put some of your scrap leaves, the ones that were sort of broken and torn. Um, you're just going to put them uh, over those lemons as another protective layer. Don't have to be too neat about it unless you're doing it for your Instagram. <laughs> um, and then, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take some more of those broken leaves and you're going to line the sides of the pot with them. Um, and I'm sure some of you have done this before, but um, they should, the leaves will be a little bit wet still. So they should sort of stick to the pot and you can just slightly overlap them over the top of the pot. Can you, can you see what I'm doing here? Yeah. Um, and you can go all the way around the sides of the pot. Again, this is just to make sure 
that none of the leaves get singed by the by the heat. Overlapping them on the sides. Overlapping them slightly on the sides, just to make yeah. sure everything's, everything's covered. And just save a, save a few vine leaves because we will, if you're doing two layers of dolma, you can also put them between the layers of dolma and we'll also put just a few on the top as well. So we're wrapping, wrapping them up and protecting them like a nice parcel. Okay. Um, if people are ready, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna start rolling my dolma, and um, uh, I'll show you how to do the first few, and then we can um, uh, people can ask questions if they've got. But this is going to be uh, this will take us a little while. Um, that's I think one of the joyful things about dolma. Uh, in the same way uh, with the lovely Manti workshop that we did, um, Manto workshop, and uh, with a lot of Armenian food, it takes time. And uh, I think that's one of the things that really draws me to it. It's a, it's a slow social process um, and rolling dolma is definitely that. Um, so uh, what you'll do, um, I, I tend to roll a few on the board. Um, so maybe sort of 10 or so, and then I'll put them in all at once rather than putting them in as I make them. Um, uh, so I'll just show you how I roll them. So you're going to take a nice leaf, I'm trying to find one, a nice easy one for me to start with. And just make sure it's all the way uh, flattened out and there are no creases in it. Uh, and then you're going to take, and again, this is really up to you, but I, I tend to use a, a sort of tablespoon of mixture. So you put it in the uh, the centre of the leaf, just above where you've take, taken that stalk off. Um, and then I just flatten it out a little bit uh, into a bit of a line like that. So you're taking up probably the middle um, third of the leaf. Um, and then I take the bottom of the leaf. And again, depending on how the leaf is made up, you might need to move this around a bit. But I'll take the bottom of the leaf and just roll it over like that. You want to see that? Uh, and then I take the sides of the leaves and fold them in towards the middle, like you're folding a burrito. <laughs> uh, and then you're going to roll over those sides, rolling forwards all the way until it's rolled like that. Uh, and then if you're going to not put them in the pot straight away, just make sure when you put them down on the surface, you put them on the side of the leaf that's um, loose. So it will just sort of seal it in place. And you don't want to wrap them too tightly because um, you want uh, you want a little bit of uh, space for the rice to grow and expand as, as it absorbs the water and the lemon juice that we're going to put in the pot in a bit. Um, so not too tightly, but also not too loose because if they're too loose, they'll sort of fall to pieces when um, uh, when you take them out of the pot. Um, so I'll show you that one more time, and then if anyone's got any questions, we can. Um, we can do it, but I'm sure you're already rolling, rolling away. So one, uh, you have your leaf out, making sure the veiny side is up towards you, so you can feel the, you can feel those veins. Um, take a tablespoon of mixture, put it just above where the stalk used to be, uh, and then you can flatten it out a bit if you want your uh, sama to be a bit longer, um, and then folding from the bottom up, folding in the sides, folding it all in so that the front bit is then narrower than the length of the dolma, so you don't have any sticking out. Flatten it down and just roll, 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 and there's number two. Right, just going to check in and see, uh, is that 
All good? Everyone is rolling? Stephen, I see you rolling. Yeah, all good. Karen? Looks like it. Oh, absolute pro. Look at those. Let's let's spotlight Karen. And, yeah, uh, for sure. Look at those. Wow. Amazing. I mean, it's this is the two, two sets of two sets of hands is the absolute yes. key. That's fantastic. Also, they're making dolma for the entire Armenian community, so it's good. Looks that like it. Yeah. Lots of hands <laughs> I think Hasmig is trying to speak. Where do they live? Where do they live? <laughs> Hasmik, they might not want to publicize it to all of our uh, Facebook audience. <laughs> North London. North London. Oh, do you? Okay. Originally from Los Angeles, both of us. Oh, nice to oh. meet you. Now it's much easier to get hold of vine leaves in Los Angeles yeah, than it is in, uh, in London. Well, yeah, we went to Kentish Town. There's a Middle Eastern shop. That's where we got our grape leaves from, if yeah. anyone's listening, wondering. What was the shop called? Uh, the Phoenician? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were quite, they have everything you could possibly want. Yeah, it was really nice. It had a selection of leaves. And then we found out they're from California, so. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> this must be the most international dolma made in London from <laughs> Californian Middle Eastern <laughs> grape leaves. So there is a, um, this uh, cookbook, Lavash. Uh, which was written by uh, three Americans, um, uh, Arazada, who's an American-Armenian chef uh, who lives in Los Angeles, um, uh, Kate Leahy, who is um, a food writer and um, uh, recipe writer and a food historian uh, who lives in San Francisco, and John Lee, who's a, an Asian-American food photographer who lives in Singapore. And they wrote uh, Lavash. They went and studied, uh, met people in Armenia and studied the food and then wrote this beautiful, beautiful book. And we are, um, next week, we are making a video <laughs> together um, called Dolma in the Diaspora. And uh, wow. Aaron is going to make his Dolma it, with his Armenian family in Los Angeles. And I'm going to... I'm going to represent us Londoners and I'm going to make them here in my flat. And then John has found some, some of the very few Armenians in Singapore. Um, uh, this is an Armenian church in Singapore. And he has found these Armenians who've agreed to make Dolma in, uh, in Singapore. And they are now currently searching for the vine leaves because they're quite hard to find in Singapore. So, um, and then the, we're going to make a video about the three of us all making uh, Dolma in our different cities um, and talking about different recipes and all of that. That's cool. So if, if, you uh, if you don't follow them on Instagram or YouTube, they've just set up a YouTube channel called A Thousand Meals, which is a really interesting. Uh, they're putting lots of video content on there of some of their recipes. That all sounds amazing. We'll share some of these links in the chat line or in our Facebook comments um, so you can follow also Ed's website. At the Armenian Institute, um, came, uh, the stall at the um, summer festival, a lot of people were looking for Armenian cookery books. So perhaps this lavash one might be a good um, idea to get. It's it's a really. I, I promise I'm not. I don't have any shares in this book. <laughs> no. I don't have a financial interest. Uh, I just really really love it. Um, yeah. It's um. It looks it's wonderful. Very beautiful yeah. Book and the photography is really beautiful. Um, and uh, it's where I learned. It's how I learned uh, to make bastama during lockdown. Um, uh -huh much to the annoyance of my neighbours, because my flat was very yes. smelly at the time. <laughs> um, Ed, have you thought about doing a we cookbook yourself? Really... Sorry, was someone going to say something? I was asking, have you thought about uh, creating a cookbook yourself? Uh, not, not yet. I think I need a few more recipes first, but I am, I'm starting to do some writing about food on my website and that's how I met the team from Lavash because I wrote an article on my website which I'll link in a bit um, which is about um, 
uh, which is londoncooking.co.uk actually. And I wrote an article about Armenian food and discovering more about my Armenian roots and my family through food. Um, wow. And that's how I met the team from Lavash. Just to say that we, we uh, a friend of AI had suggested Lavash cookbook to us before Christmas. And did I already say this? Uh, you haven't said it. You haven't quickly. said it during this call. No. So we should get it back. So we should get it back in stock. Great. As everybody recommends it. I've shared um, the links to Ed's uh, blog and Instagram, both on Facebook and in the chat. So please go and follow him and spread the word. My favorite is Arthur de Haratunian's books. From, from Man Arthur from Manchester. That yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this uh, this one actually belongs to my father, um, and I think he would like it back. So I won't show it yeah. for too long. <laughs> How's everyone getting on with the rolling? Oh, messy, messy. So if you. Uh, if you roll about 15 of them, uh, then we can, um, we can pause and we can just assemble the first, uh, first sort of rung of uh, dolma. We'll put them into the pan. Very nice. I thought you wish that you were joining in. Yes, I'm having a uh, childhood flashbacks with doing this with my grandma oh. and I'm to remember she would always have a bowl of warm water next to her when rolling it and dip her hands oh. in it and I'm trying to remember what was it maybe it was all the grapes were too salty she would put the leaves in there no, uh, that was so did mine and I Susan, to keep the head clean. Probably, we're losing Susan, your voice is so. Um... Um, maybe we can just, if you, uh, if you spotlight me for a moment, I'll just um, start putting some of these into the pan. Okay, let's go. So, um, uh, I like to, uh, and again, this varies. Uh, I imagine people have different ways of doing this, but the way that I do it is in concentric circles. Um, so uh, you're just going to start packing them around the bottom of the pan. Uh, first of all, around the outside, um, tip to tip like that. And again, the seam of the, uh, sorry, the light's not good here, but where the leaf closes over the dolma, you want to put that on the bottom uh, to make sure that seals up. Um, and uh, you want to pack them in, not too tightly, but again, they should be held in place. Um, so they shouldn't be able to wiggle about when they're boiling in a little bit. Um, so make sure they're snug. And then once you've got all the way around once, whoops, uh, then you just start um, another row just inside those ones. Just going to move my hands for a moment. You can see, I've started like that. These are actually quite large, these dolma. I'm using quite large leaves, I think. Right, if yours are a little bit smaller than this. As you can see, 
you're starting to do the concentric circles. That looks very nice. Mm. How's, is that, are we starting to put them into pans? I'm gonna leave that there for you. I'm gonna keep making Velma. Um, if you, um, an another thing to know that if you, um, uh, if you have uh, small leaves or if leaves are slightly broken, um, sometimes you can do a bit of a rescue job on them. Um, uh, and I, if I've got really small ones, let's see if I can find a small one. Um, you can just put one sort of on top of the other. Um, uh, so like this, I'll just show you. So there's one leaf and then I would put one just slightly further forwards like that. So one leaf and then another leaf. Uh, it just makes it slightly easier to roll. So if you've got one that's got a bit of a hole in it or is a bit too small, you can sort of just patch them together and they'll all, they'll all stitch together when they, uh, when they cook. I can see everyone looking very concentrated <laughs> and rolling. Um, I was reading a lot about Dolman history and how spread it is all over the world and um, mm -hmm. I was surprised to discover it's far more popular in um, Europe than I thought. Apparently there's a Swedish version of it called... Um, Gal Dolmar, which apparently one of the Swedish <coughs> kings took it from Ottoman Empire. Oh, right. Yeah, it's still Dolmar, Dolma, the same uh, root of the world. I think, it's very interesting. I think there are versions of it sort of all over, um, all over the world. My, um, my father sent me an email earlier today um, with Vietnamese Dolma. Um, uh, they have some friends in Vietnam. And they're not called Dolma in Vietnam. I'm not sure of what the name is, but um, I think, that, and they're not vine leaves, but there's some sort of fragrant leaf that is then wrapped, wrapped around what I assume is a sort of pork uh, mixture. I think pork and onion and um, some Vietnamese oh. spices and, and um, steamed, almost like dumplings. Yeah. Someone when, was... you, when you get one layer like this, um, if you just have a little look, um, once you've got a full layer, don't worry if they're not quite concentric circles in the middle, um, then you can take some of your broken leaves again um, and just uh, put down a layer of those leaves um, on top of that first layer of dolma um, just to protect them so they don't all stick together. Um, and then you can um, just cover them up and then you can start your second layer of dolma and depending on how many how big you're making them and how much rice you've got you might not fill the pan all the way around twice but don't worry about that i'll show you what to do if we um if we get to that in a bit ed and if you were using uh, meat what what sort of meat would you use Um, uh, me or someone else? <laughs> you, you do, or someone else? If anyone, has um, so I've, I've, I, uh, I haven't made dolma with vine leaves and meat before. The only meat-based ones I've made are cabbage leaves. Um, uh -huh. So there's a photo of that on my Instagram if you want to take a look. But I used um, cabbage leaf rolls instead of. Um, instead of vine leaves. And actually when I went to Armenia, I, I went to Armenia when I left school and I worked in a summer camp just outside Spitak. Um, I volunteered, uh, me and my cousin went and volunteered in a school for um, three weeks running a summer camp uh, with young Armenian children. And uh, we got treated to lots of meals in the village. And one in particular, we went to uh, one of the volunteers houses to have dolma. And those dolma were 
stuffed cabbage leaves and they came hot and they were stuffed with meat and uh, they came in a sort of hot tomatoey oily broth um, and the uh, the host um, after we'd eaten the dolma scooped up cups of this hot broth and handed it around the table and he said to me and my cousin he said it's very important you drink this hot dolma broth because it will make you a strong man um, which <laughs> I'm it not clearly worked. Sure. <laughs> well, I'm not entirely sure it worked, but um, uh, yes, it was very, very, uh, very delicious, but quite a hearty dish because uh, I'd not had dolma like that before. I'd had, you know, these quite small, delicate, often cold dolma, um, but these were real, it was a real mm. meaty, wholesome dish. Maybe this is a good time to talk about um, when the yalanji or the vegetarian sarma dolma were traditionally eaten, which is Lenten periods. But earlier there were um, a lot more Lenten periods. There's the medspak, the big, big Lent before Easter, but also there's a, um, a shorter one before Christmas traditionally and other periods during the year for a day or, or shorter, short periods. And, you know, at these times, this kind of sarma dolma was eaten and otherwise it was meat. And of course, Armenians, like many people in the Middle East, have all kinds of recipes where they have meat, but only little bits of meat. So a, a small amount of meat yes. goes a long ways and feeds the family. We grew up with um, mostly eating the, what we called sarma, the, the meat dolma. And that was with the... Um, lamb with ground lamb minced lamb um in fact lamb was <laughs> really staple almost almost as much a staple as chicken in our household and um uh, it was really a very plain our recipe our family recipe was a very plain one um the meat one just onions parsley rice ground minced meat which at that time we're talking you know, a few decades ago, we uh, all got together in the kitchen and the kids would have their job with the uh, meat grinder thing. The, uh, Dad would take the meat off the bone and throw it into the hopper and we would stand there and just grind the thing up. Um, you had to do the same thing for Chikufta, of course, and many more grindings. Yeah. Uh, now, you, you know, well... Now for quite a while, you can buy your minced minced meat, lamb, just like beef. So what was it? Yeah, it was just a, like five ingredients. You know, all the, the, the rice, the meat, the parsley, the um, salt and pepper, and tomato sauce, as, as, as we just heard. Susan, what meat did you use? Lamb. Okay. Always lamb. Okay. Our family. I think most Armenians at that time. Now uh, people use all different things. There is a fancy new recipe in Armenia, which is with um, crab meat or uh, crayfish meat. Really? Crayfish oh, meat in the seven crayfish, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like make mixing lamb and beef together because I do like beef, but lamb makes it softer if I make it. I have to say, making sarma with uh, lamb with meat is a lot easier than without because it sort of binds all the together. together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just sort of, um, finding it scooting all over the place, <laughs> so trying to keep it. I'm and glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Now I remember why my brother-in-law makes our our um, yalanchi for us. Uh, yeah. And um, he is very particular, so we usually leave him to it. And now I know why. <laughs> it's hard work. Uh, Susan, I wanted to ask you about the Lenten one, because my idea of Pasut stole my Lenten one. Of course, in Soviet times, there was no religious uh, connection to it or religious connotation, but we would always have it for New Year. Which right, you but that's the Lent before Christmas. Yeah, probably. But it was chickpeas and all sorts of beans all boiled together and wrapped in cabbage leaves and they were huge and you'd eat them cold wow and <laughs> they were a nice it was like a nice meze type of dish 
you would serve it cold. But obviously the Lenten one, Yalan Chi one, uh, is with rice, not, not chickpeas or cabbage, is it? Uh, I don't know, not the ones that I've had. You know, I have a limited range of growing up in, a, in an extended family, but we didn't, there were really only people from Kesab, for, you know, at that time, mm. the Middle East. We didn't mix with a lot of other people from Armenia. We didn't have any. I didn't know anybody from Armenia at that time. Yeah. Amazing variety. Now we have the its own version with yeah. nuts and currants. Um, well, food is like language. It has to grow. It has to change over time. It can't stay the same. Yeah. yeah. I've talked a lot about this because people were asking, is it a dolma you're making? Is it a sarma? We thought that as long as Edith is calling it dolma, it's a dolma. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, it it, is awesome. It's been interesting and surprising to me how uh, people get quite angry about what it's called. I, I'm really <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you call it what I you... take it very seriously. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, it's okay. We all have these different names, in my opinion. Uh, hey, it's can I ask used to in the family, isn't it? Yes, it's what you got used to growing up. Yes. Yeah. I, I, after a while, after this argument was taking place over the internet, I went back to what I consider the Armenian cooking Bible, the AGBU. Oh, yes. 1949 Treasure <laughs> Armenian Recipes. I think yeah. it was the first sort of cookbook of that time. And there the, um, they have both words. So they use Doma, the women of that time who were genocide survivors themselves, who had learned how to cook in the old country. They used Doma for the meat version and they used Sarma for this, what we're making, I mean, their version of what we're making now. My family just narrowed it down to just using Sarma. <laughs> yeah. And the uh, spelling with D or T has been a shorthand for Western and Eastern uh, Armenian wars on Twitter as well. So <laughs> a lot of controversy about very nice food. I think the thing that frustrates me uh, about uh, Dolma and uh, Sarma is is uh, people's misconception about them because uh, so um, last year a friend of mine runs a cheese stall in East London and she and I sometimes work with her on the cheese stall um, and she asked me if I would like to sell dolma on this stall and so for a couple of months I was selling dolma alongside her cheese on this stall which is why I spent time developing the recipe and um, uh, the people who love Dolma in, uh, in London really love Dolma and the people who don't really, really don't and they tell you about it. And I think, unfortunately, it's because a lot of people's experience in the UK, at least, of Dolma is those sort of kind of watery, tasteless, um, uh, without any texture, soft things that often get flung onto a plate as part of a Middle Eastern meze dish at a restaurant. Um, and I think that they can have such flavor and texture and the sweetness and the sourness and all of that. Um, so uh, I think it's a real shame when people kind of say, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I say, you haven't tried real Armenian dolma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. We, I usually avoid it in restaurants unless you really know the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. It never, it never. Ed, Ed, have you ever cooked super egg? Um, well, what, uh, what do you mean by that? Super egg, um, it's like beret, but the pastry is cooked. Um, it, it's a very long process to cook the pastry. I mean, you can buy it ready-made. Oh, and, do you, you uh, mean making the pastry yourself? Yeah, you can cook it, but I think you have to boil it. It's, it's quite complicated and very long. So I had somebody ask me if we can demonstrate that uh, Subur egg one day. I, I, would, I would absolutely love to learn how to do that. I, I, whenever anyone says it's complicated and it takes a long time about a recipe, 
I, I like to hear that. So <laughs> I have made, I've made barrette before. I'll show you. I'll show you quickly a um, uh, a photo of the barrette. But this is. Some people think this is not. I mean, this is not traditional barrack, I don't think, but this is the barrack that I made. I'll show you, Let's see how I do this. Um, uh, share screen. Um, so. Wow. <laughs> Those are amazing. Oh my goodness. I posted the links to Ed's pages in the, in the chat. It's on Facebook as well. Please go and support him. He's doing some wonderful things on his yes. website. My pastoma and the uh, sweet sejuk. Oh, this wow. This is what bringing in my fridge. Um, That's amazing. Wow. And let's see if we can find the barrack. You put us to shame. Oh, the, these were the um, cabbage uh, dolma. Oh gosh, that looks, the presentation is wonderful too. And then uh, Mantir. So when are you opening an Armenian restaurant then? Ah, soon, hopefully. North I, I, London, I'm, please, in North London. In North London, okay. Please. I, I, I met, during lockdown, I met, here's my Barak, during lockdown I met a, an Armenian a Lebanese Armenian chef who lives in London and she runs a supper club. Um, uh, and we're talking That's about maybe doing, an maybe doing an Armenian supper club later. Well, we were going to do it later in the year, but probably now next supper club in London, but we'd love to do, yeah. we'd love to do another one. Um, and cook this kind of food. So um, uh, I'll let you know if that, if that ends up happening. Uh, but this barrack was rolled, which I think is not the traditional way to do it. I, my great aunt used to do layers, um, layers for the barrack. But this is, this was a sort of, I made a long sausage and then rolled it and baked it all in a pan. Yeah. Coming back to the dolmas and the sarma, whichever one you want to call, I yeah. tend to do mine in a perspex dish and put it in an oven. Oh, really? And that works quite well. I, that's, um, I, I guess they get more, oh look and here's the manta that we all made together. I get they, they get more evenly cooked if you put them Yes, in and you don't worry about it uh, burning in the bottom or burning anything. I just cover it with the sauce and put it in the oven for about an hour. And then leave it maybe overnight as well and it soaks all the juice. That's a great idea. Very easy to make. Um, how's everyone doing? Are we, um, are we nearly... Nearly done. Everyone's thumbs up. Great. If you've got any space uh, if in, uh, left in your pan, I have a bit of space in the middle there. I just put a leaf in to make sure it kind of all stays. And then um, before we seal it up, we're going to put our liquid in. And this is quite important um, because unlike putting them in the oven, we, the intention is for all of the water to be absorbed. Um, so um, uh, what I do is I get a... Um, a jar or a jug or a bowl um, to mix my liquids in. And the liquids that we're going to put in this and mix together are two tablespoons of oil. And at this point, I use good oil. I'll, I'll normally use extra virgin olive oil because it just gives it a nice bit of flavour. Um, but any oil, any olive oil that you have, two tablespoons of oil one tablespoon of lemon juice. Hopefully you haven't used all your lemons on the bottom of the pan. Um, uh, and then a cup of water. And uh, if you use uh, hot water uh, from the kettle, that's best. So uh, if you don't have a cup measurement, uh, a cup of water is about 240 milliliters. So 240, 250 milliliters would be about right. But that's two tablespoons, I'm going to put it in the chat again, two tablespoons of oil, um, one tablespoon of lemon juice, uh, and one cup or uh, 240 milliliters of uh, hot water. And you're going to mix that up in the jug uh, and then you're going to pour that into your dolma pan. 
I'm going to do that now with you. And I hope I will see pictures of um, all these nice symmetrical little rolls, little cigars, like <laughs> Susan was calling them earlier. Uh, so, yes, and then you're just going to pour that over the top of your dolma. So, again, that's two tablespoons of oil, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and one large cup of water, or about 240, 250 milliliters of water, boiling water. Mix it all together, pour it over the top of the dolma. And then once that's in, um, you're going to just uh, fold over those those sides that were up like that. So just fold them over, and if you have a leaf or two, just to place on top, just to cover, um, make sure none of the dolma are showing. Uh, and then at this point, I take a small side plate, and I uh, place that side plate. And you'll have to see if you've got one that's the right size in your cupboard. I just place it on top of the dolma and just gently push down just to make sure they're all secured in place. Oops. Oh, crikey. There we go. Then you're going to take the, uh, the lid for your pot and um, you can either just pop it on um, if it's a tight fitting lid or and uh, or you can take a tea towel and wrap the lid of your um, of your pot in this in your tea towel now this is something that my uh, my father does every time he cooks rice and I've never fully understood why he does it but because he does it I also do it <laughs> so I think it's to absorb a little bit of the extra moisture that's in there um, but it also helps just seal the pan up. So uh, once you put your lemon juice, oil and water in the pot, you fold it over the leaves, you put a side plate on top, um, then you're going to pop a lid on it. And then you're going to go over to the hob, slightly dirty looking hob now I'm afraid, and we are going to put that on a high heat. Um, until we can hear it boiling up. Um, now, this is the bit where it's uh, not quite a science. Um, so there's a little bit of uh, hope and a prayer. Um, but the idea is to get the, get the liquid boiling. Um, so put it on a high heat until you can hear it bubbling away. And then you're going to turn it down to a low to medium heat. So I have nine settings on my, uh, on my hob and um, I normally do it on about three or four. So a sort of lo low to medium heat, uh, but get it boiling first and then bring it down to a low to medium heat. Um, and we're going to let that bubble away um, for... Um... Excuse me, Edward. Yes. Hello. Excuse me, um, you went quite fast in the last bit because we were still fiddling around and okay. I didn't see you wrap up what looks like a Christmas parcel. Could, yeah. could, get to the finish of what you want to say but could you just run through that again? From can, absolutely. Uh, we're going to get those, we're going to get, I'll just say we're going to get them onto the boil and get it bubbling up and then we're going to turn it down to a low to medium heat. But in this pot, once you've put in the fi your final vine leaves, 
um, you're going to pour in two tablespoons of oil, one tablespoon of lemon juice and one cup of boiling water, large, large cup of boiling water. Once that's in, uh, you're going to place leaves over the top of it to protect the tops of your dolma. And then you're going to put a side plate on top of those to, to hold the dolma in place. Um, and that, that side plate should fit inside the pot, as you can see. And that's just going to hold those in place. You can give it a little push down. And then, um, and then you pop a lid on the pan. And I've wrapped the lid with a tea towel, but you don't have to. Uh, and then you're going to heat up the pot until you can hear it boiling away. And then you're going to turn it down to a low to medium heat. And the idea is that you can hear it simmering for the whole cooking time. If, if you can't hear simmering, it's either too low or all of your water has dried up and then your dolma are burning. So um, be super careful about that. Um, but you want to get that bubbling away, low to medium heat, and then it'll be 55 minutes. And at this point, um, once everyone's happy that we've got to that point, we um, will probably take a pause. Um, uh, so 55 minutes takes us to 6.50, 10 to 7. Um, now, uh, as I think Susan was saying at the top of the session, these dolma are best after you've cooked them, if you leave them in the pan and let them cool down and then put it in the fridge and just leave them in that pan overnight. And then tomorrow morning, you can take them out and they will have absorbed all of those flavours, all of the oil, the juices and everything, and they'll have swelled up. Uh, swollen up and they'll be beautiful um, however uh, it would be nice to say goodbye to everyone once we've cooked our dolma so maybe um, at seven o'clock uh, if anyone would like to you, you don't have to but if you'd like to we could come back and we could open our dolma pans and maybe sneak one out of the top and um, uh, cool it down and give it a taste it won't be as good as it is tomorrow, but at least we can see and we can talk if anyone's had any problem. We can have a glass of wine. If anyone would like to have a glass of wine at seven o'clock, I'd very much like that. And we can talk about other Armenian food and recipes and, um, and lockdown.